So here's the coal frame so far. Adam worked on it on Saturday. He's using scrap wood that uh, used to be on the front porch when we had it as kind of a greenhouse. It's going to be nice and tall. Look at those. Look at that angle. He said the angle has to match your latitude. Um, I also just noticed that he took apart his very rickety sawhorse situation. He had some wooden sawhorses here that were just falling apart and apparel to the world <laughs> um, and then he also had some more boards on top that were in bad shape anyway he's scavenged some of that and used it for this front piece there's not a back on it but we may use the house itself as the back and then let me show you the windows that we already had that are going to be the front of the pole frame of course he's going to attach those sometime this week because I need to go show you these um, collards and how big they are. Here they are. I guess I put them into that starter mix a little over a week ago and they've been popped up for less than a week and they are so I guess there's like this one has got to be almost three inches long. They're very leggy because they're reaching for the sun. Um, so I'm going to transplant these into something deeper than these little cells, um, probably in about a week, and get them into that cold frame outside. They're very hardy in this kind of weather, which is not really that cold. Anyway, we'll see. Hello everyone, it's good to see you again. This week's video, I'm going to make a quilt block and probably um, put batting in the middle and back on it and, you know, put edge on it um, as I've done before. But I really want to make a quilt block that I saw Kate Jackson make on her channel. Um, her channel is called The Last Homely House and she is a big uh, blogger and has a wonderful professional channel. And if you don't watch her, you might want to think about doing that. Uh, I think you'd enjoy it. For Advent, she's posting um, a video every day during December for her Patreons for $1 for the month. <laughs> well, I took up that deal. I was like, man, where can you find a deal like that? So for $1, I get a different quilt block every day. And even though I am not a quilter, and I don't think I'll ever really be a quilter, like make big blankets for the bed, um, I do love watching the complexity of how she puts these blocks together and all that you can do with fabric. I, I really never knew that that was the fun of quilting. Well, anyway, one of my favorite blocks is the log cabin. As you know, I've done some log cabin work, but she did it in a way that was different. And I'll put a link here to that video where she did that last week sometime. But I want to give this a try because the way that she assembles four different log cabin um, squares and puts them together. It just, oh, it was just so wonderful. So I have chosen some fabrics here from my scraps, from my strips that my friend gives me. I'm going to trim them to the right width. Um, here's the center. It's a dark blue with turtles. And then I've also got all these other dark colors that I'm going to use together and good variety of those. And then I also have some light colored ones that I'm going to use for the contrast and hope that I can arrange this correctly. You see there's kind of a, an ocean theme here with crabs and uh, octopus and turtles so uh, maybe that'll appeal to somebody in our coastal community. I'm going to make one of these um, squares with you today and then I'll make another three and then we'll put the four together and I'll show you, hopefully I'll get that done this week, I'll show you 
uh, what is made when you put them together in a special way. Let's get started. So when Kate did this, she used one inch wide strips, and I think she had a two inch wide center block. Um, okay, let me, I'm going to use wider strips. I, that sounds really fiddly. I think she even mentioned that it was quite fiddly because uh, they were so little. So I might start with a three inch wide strip. I mean, a three inch wide center block. I need to remember that I need to cut four of everything. Okay, so at least this will get me started after I get these done. And then um, I'll start on my dark strips first and I will do maybe two inch strips. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know, boy, now I'm wondering. Okay. So I'll let you know. I'm deciding as I go, can you tell? Now my strips that my friend gives me are not always two inches wide, so I can't do a two inch strip, but I can pretty much do a one and a half inch strip. So what I did was I did cut those center blocks um, one and a half inch on each side. And now these strips are pretty long. I'm just going to leave them long. And I'm going to cut them one and a half. Hopefully this will work well because yeah, when I do I folded them over to do that, and now I've got really long, you see, really long strips. So we will try that. I love this deep purple. Now this one's not as long. And sometimes, I mean, she's not, because the friend that gives them to me is cutting them all different lengths. And like this one, you can see at the end, one end is wider than the other. So it's really important for me to pick a straight edge and then cut the other side. So I may be doing this for a while. These blocks are not very big, but I do need four of them. So I don't think it'll take me. I'm not making a blanket or anything, but it'd be nice if I didn't have to come back and do more later. Okay, let's do some optics. So, as you would expect, I changed my mind about the center block. I love this fabric, but I cut them too small, and then I cut all the rest of it into strips. <laughs> so, um, in, in the inch and a half strips. So, I wanted a two inch center block, so I chose this fabric for my center, which I think is a really fun fabric as well. So, now I'm going to start sewing up uh, this first log cabin, and we'll see what it looks like. Now, I'm watching Kate do this as I sew it. And one thing I'd like to say is that, so here's my center square and here's my first side piece, okay, that I've sewn on. And she goes ahead and uses the same fabric to sew the second piece. Now I wonder if that's not quite long enough. I'm going to have to use, I'll save this for one of my next squares. And I'll pull this out. So, and this is part of, I want to be careful to follow what she does with where she uses various fabrics. So this means that your center square is going to end up getting surrounded on two sides by the same fabric here, and then on this side by another same fabric in this L, okay? Okay, so this is my first little part of this first square. I know the light is not the best. It's because it's coming through that window. So I'm going to keep on with now some of my lighter colored fabric on the other side. Now I've barely been sewing any time at all, and I'm already halfway through with this first block. Um, now notice, well, no, I'm not halfway done yet. 
Now I'm halfway done. <laughs> that looks better. And now this uh, this piece is in the center. Okay, and you're starting to see the you, know, you have your centerpiece and you have your darks on one side and your lights on the other. And that's really uh, what she did because she's making a Christmas quilt. She had an assortment of red patterned fabric over here and then all solid green over here. So she had the red and green, but I don't have enough solid fabrics. I, I really just have patterned fabric and all of the scraps I have are patterned. They're not solid. So I had to go with something that would still contrast. And that's why I'm picking the really dark and the really light. But now I'm halfway through. I only have, um, this is what I've got center block and I've got one row, two rows. So I just need a third and fourth row and then I'm done with this block. It's it's there I need four of them, but they're very fast. So here is the finished block. I kind of like it at a diagonal like that. Let me turn the camera just a hair so the light is a little better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Now, when we put this together with three others, we're going to put all the darks in the middle and all the lights on the outside and the effect it has. It has a way of showcasing that center block, which is fun. Um, this took me all of... 15 minutes to sew together actually the cutting took some time and then I had to change my bobbin and then my tension went wonky but um as old sewing machines will do but the sewing itself takes almost no time um I will put a little link here to the tutorial that I did if you can call it a tutorial uh, for doing a log cabin but there's just a million of them out there on YouTube so you don't have to watch mine because it's probably not as good as some others so um, I'll get back to you when I have four of these and we'll put it up on my design board door as we've done before. I'm also going to press it nicely so it lies flat. Okay, I'll be back. Somebody's decided to help me sew my log cabin star. Are you going to help? Are you going to hinder? <laughs> Lucy. She doesn't know her name yet, really, but she does respond to... Now, don't let me get your tail under that needle. That would be tragical. All right, we got it. We got to. We got to charge forward with the second square. No, no, no! Don't do that.
I don't want to pretend that this is a large project <laughs> compared to how other people quilt. But it's kind of exciting for me because I've never really quilted. And I think, isn't this the first time that I have um, done different squares and, uh, and rearranged them to see what kind of patterns they make? I think it is. Now, this is just a wooden door. This is the best I can do. <laughs> and so um, I'm putting double-sided tape on the back of it. But um, it's amazing how well this does hold up. Now, let's see how it looks with all the darks in the middle. Um, two things. There were two things I wanted to say if I can remember what they were. <laughs> Um, wait, no, that's not right. Um, I did change out the center square. Okay. I didn't use the same fabric for the center. So here's the first one I did. It had the octopus that has kind of a pink background. Here's a purple one. Here's that pretty dark blue that I like so much at the beginning. And then the last one has a... The center square has a black background um, and it has crabs. Okay, whoop, didn't get that tape on. Okay, now I'm going to stand back. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was that I wanted to follow what Kate did pretty precisely. And it's important, I think, that she, when she starts with her center square, the first thing she does is, is what's in the middle. Um, she used red here in the center. I'm using dark. She used green on the outside. I'm using light. But um, whatever you start with here, the opposite color is going to be your last one and is going to give you a running border of whatever it is all the way around the outside okay and I think that I'm calling this the log cabin star because I do think it has kind of a star like effect when you step back from it which I'm doing now um, and I think it'll be even more noticeable when I get it um, sewn together this one's drooping a little bit with its tape but do you see how you have these four points of the star going out and I do think it kind of, you know, the foundations are these four center pieces, and they really do kind of keep it tight in. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, so here is it pieced together, you know, on the design board, the design door. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go sew it up now, and then I'll put some batting in the middle, try to find some backing fabric. And then I've got some fabric um, that I'll show you in a second. Now I have to go clean up all of these strips and scraps that are all over my studio. But um, here is the, the binding fabric that I've chosen, if I have enough of it. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so uh, moving on. But here it is, my four squares on the design board. So here are the blocks pieced together. I haven't pressed them yet. I've got some really bad issues though. <laughs> now, everything is nice and square here, here, and here, but not down here. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. I've got such a dog leg here, and then I'm gonna not have these edges meet when I finish this off. 
I also need to go back and stitch this because somehow I didn't catch it. I've got a hole in the middle. Oh, this, why are these, why is this piece so short? I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, um, but I am, this is my first time to do this. And so I am learning. Maybe you're learning too. Um, if you are, I hope you can relate to this. So uh, let's go uh, fix this and stitch it. And I'm going to trim it up a little bit and hope that I can, I may just have to trim this off on the bottom. Yeah. But don't you like the overall effect? I did try to get this, this black section here is pronounced and this is too. So I try to get them on opposite sides. I did a little rearranging. Um, yeah. I do love it though. I'd love to do this again with other fabrics. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. Do you know what I just realized is that this could also become a pillow cover. I had not thought about that. And I do have, um, I have a pillow, uh, insert that I could put on, put a back on it. Let me show you. This is a more useful idea than just having a square that sits around on a table. Let's look. So here it is sewn together and pressed. I think it is pretty flashy. Here's the bad edge down there. Oh, but here's the pillow. And it almost, it, I think it's a little small for the pillow. But if I ran, oh yes, if I just did, hang on. See, here's the stuff I was going to put in the middle. But if I put another edge of this all the way around, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, let's do that. Put, I'll put this as an edging all the way around to give it a little bit more width. And that should make it fit. Oh, I'm so excited. And this will tie in really well with this middle. And then I've got lots of other, um, not solid fabrics, but big pieces of fabric. Uh, they're big enough for this. Uh, for a back. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, we're going to do that. Okay, I got to crack on then. After rummaging around in my little fabric drawer, I discovered this fabric, which is a little heftier. You know, I have a, a little bit of a collection of um, upholstery fabric type, and this is a little bit more like that. It's a little heavier, and I think that's good on a cushion. Um, anyway, and it has blues. Of course, they won't be right together. But I love this, and I've been looking for a way to use it. It's only, boy, probably a half a yard, but I think it'll be long enough to go um, on the back of, of this cushion, and I will do, I think they call it an envelope closure. We'll see how that works. The project is complete. Here it is. Look at the, isn't that a great pattern? Now, mine is not, boy, you can really tell it's off. Look at this line here and this line here. They're not, I did something wrong. Okay, we'll turn it this way so it looks better. Maybe this way. There, no, no, not that way. I don't know. <laughs> but I still like it. I like how the dark burst out like that. And I want to thank Kate Jackson for this pattern. Um, here's the back. Okay. And this is that little envelope closure I was talking about. It's real simple. I, um, I didn't show the making of the whole pillow cover because I've already done that with Log Cabin. And I'll put a link up here, if I remember, uh, to the video where I, I do that. And if you want to know how to do that, you can. Um, I just used two, this cover and uh, the fabric on the back. I didn't have any batting or anything in there to stiffen it up. So I like that pillow to figure if I should give it away to somebody for Christmas or keep it for myself. <laughs> I could always make another one for me. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time in another video.